Operation New Blood has been released to the test server, and with it comes the new recruit rework and multiple balancing changes that will have a profound effect on the meta. So in today's video, I'll be doing a new and updated defender tier list, same as every other season. I'll be going in alphabetical order and timestamps will be in the description for your viewing experience. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the video. Now, the first operate I'm going to be ranking on this tier list is Alibi, and she is going to be going in the top of D tier. Alibi is in desperate need of a rework, and that is because her gadget just completely sucks. As you guys know, a while ago, Alibi was extremely popular, and she was one of the most picked operators in the game at one point. But the reason for that is because her gun is really good, and she had access to the 1.5, and she also had a deployable shield at her disposal. It never had anything to do with her gadget. And I think that's why Alibi is a fundamentally flawed operator. Most people only really pick her for her gun and the fact that she's a three speed they never pick her because of the utility she brings to the table and alibi's clones desperately need some form of buff i feel like having her clones mimic cosmetics would be a good start but i feel like they should also come up with a way to buff her in additional ways like maybe allowing her clones to move around the map or something because right now her clones are just not good enough to really catch any good players off guard now moving past alibi we have our first operator going in the a tier and that is a rooney she has her fist which allows her to just make rotates on the fly without really having to bring any sort of shotgun or anything she has access to her dmr which is a really good weapon to have on the defense and she has her three gates which are really good for dealing with attacker utility and to also just stop the attackers from rushing through a doorway or something like that the only thing really holding a rooney back on this list is the fact that she is hard countered by brava if the enemy team brings a brava she basically flip all of your rooney gates over extremely easily which is then going to make your life on the defense a lot harder. Overall, she's still really good every round though, and that's why she's going in the A tier. Then we move on to Azami. We have our first operator to go into S tier, and that's for obvious reasons. Azami's Kibas are extremely strong. If played right, Azami can single-handedly win your entire team the round, and that is because she still gets five Kibas at her disposal. And while attackers can shoot them with bullets to get rid of them, that very rarely is effective because most of the time you can just kill them before they're able to destroy the Kiba. So generally, Azami's Kibas require the attackers to use explosive utility to get rid of them because if they don't they're going to be leaving themselves extremely vulnerable dumping a magazine into her kibas and then on top of having those amazing kibas at her disposal she also has barbed wire a desert eagle a desert eagle to make head holes and foot holes and she has her great two primary weapons in the form of the acs 12 shotgun and the vsn smg overall azami just has an amazing loadout and an amazing gadget to go along with it and i definitely think she needs some nerfs in the near future which is why she's going in the s tier i don't think that ubisoft's recent rework to her was nearly enough and so i hope we can get something in the future now moving past azami we have bandit who's going to be going in the middle of b tier bandit is a solid pick in your lineup however what's holding him back from going any higher on this list is the fact that Cade and tuberau are just way better breach denial operators Cade can get hatches and three walls with one of his Cade electric claws while bandit can only get four walls in total with all four of his batteries however bandit does have one thing going for him and that is the fact that he can bandit trick if you're good at bandit tricking you can win your team around by tricking the thermite charges or the ace charges off of a reinforced wall and considering the fact that he has access to an mp7 as his primary weapon and he has access to barbed wire or a nitro cell as a secondary gadget options there is a lot of merit to him as an operator however i think since so many other operators outclass him and the fact that he's so easily countered by operators like twitch or the attackers playing vertically on him i have to put him in the b tier position now moving past bandit we have castle who's going to be going in the bottom of a tier if you guys watch my videos you know how much i love castle i use him in almost every strategy that i make up for a bomb site his ability to cut off lines of sight is extremely strong strong because of the fact that he gets four of those bulletproof barricades if you play castle right the attackers will have to waste time dealing with his barricades or they'll have to funnel through the lines of sight that you've created by using those castle barricades and considering that castle also gets a secondary shotgun and prox alarms or a bulletproof camera to help his team set up the bomb site makes him an absolute powerhouse for any site setup and so for that reason i think he has to go in the a tier his primary weapon may not be great but everything else around his kit is top tier now the same can't be said about Kavera, which is why she's going to be going in the bottom of d tier Kavera has struggled in siege for a while to get a foothold in the competitive scene and that's for obvious reasons her gadget completely sucks the only thing that her gadget accomplishes is making her footsteps quieter and not leaving footprints behind for jackal to track however the most common way for the attackers to deal with a roamer like Kavera is to just drone them out and if the attackers drone Kavera out she can very easily be killed and dealt with this is why picking operators like vigil or solace is a much better choice in the current meta because 
because they can at least deal with drones to a certain extent, whereas Kavera can't do anything about it. And so if Kavera is properly drawn by the attacking team, they can easily shut her down. And with the rest of her loadout sucking, she doesn't really have anything to help her in those situations. And so for that reason, she has to go in the D tier. Ubisoft needs to either give her better weapons in the future, or they need to just rework her gadget entirely. Then when we pass Kavera, we have Clash, who's also going to be going in the D tier. The reason why I'm putting Clash so low on this list is because I think fundamentally Clash should not exist in the game. Clash is a very frustrating operator for many players, and that is because of the fact that she can sit behind her shield and just constantly electrocute the enemy team, which forces the attackers to move much slower, and it deals a ton of damage to them over time. This is frustrating, but if you're good at the game and you're coordinated with your team, you can very easily clear a Clash. Bringing operators like a Sophia so that way she can stun Clash's shield, allowing for her teammate to then pick up the kill, or bringing operators like Capitao to just force Clash into an unfavorable position to get a kill on her is the best ways to deal with one. On top of the fact that her shocking capabilities can just be shut down by simply throwing an EMP onto her. Clash is just so easily countered and she's also just annoying to go against. And so I think Ubisoft should consider going back to the drawing board on her gadget and potentially giving her a rework. Now moving past Clash, we have Doc who's going to be going in the lower side of B tier. Doc is a solid operator for the fact that he has access to barbed wire and he has a secondary shotgun at his disposal to help his team set up the bomb site. And then he also gets the added benefit of having those stims at his disposal to potentially revive a teammate in a bad position or to just heal himself when he takes a lot of damage in a gunfight. Now, Doc does suffer from all the same issues that other healing operators suffer from, which is the fact that his gadget is not guaranteed to get utility. If Doc dies before he can use his stim pistols or if everyone on your team gets headshotted before they can be healed by Doc, then picking Doc was pretty much worthless. The only thing you're really getting out of him is that barbed wire and secondary shotgun that he brings. And that is why Doc can't go any higher than the B tier because he's by definition not good every round. But if you want to gamble and bring Doc and hopefully get some utility out of those stim pistols, he is a solid choice because he does bring additional utility to his team outside of just those stim pistols. Now moving past Doc, we have Echo who's going to be going in the top of C tier. Echo has fallen off a lot in Siege because of the fact that his Echo drones are no longer invisible, meaning that they're a lot easier to see and a lot easier to deal with as an attacker. And this is why Echo is going so low on this list because you can very rarely pull off any sort of plays with him. I would argue that the best way to play Echo now is to use him as as a support player for his roamers. Sending out his Echo drones to support his team and kind of give them info and then to also potentially stun some attackers before his roamers get in a gunfight can be useful. But since they're so loud and obvious, the attackers can very easily get rid of them if you don't play safe. Not to mention that if the attackers know that you're bringing an Echo, they can bring a Brava and hack all of your Echo cams when you're not paying attention. And since unlike Maestro's cameras, Echo cams are completely defenseless, Brava can pretty much hack Echo's cams for free if she figures out where they are. So for all of those reasons, Echo has to go in the C tier. He can be useful in very niche situations, but for the most part, you'd be better off picking a different operator. And that exact same thing can be said about Ella. The only reason to really bring Ella in the current meta is the fact that she has a deployable shield at her disposal. Her traps really aren't that good in comparison to operators like Fenrir and Legion, and her weapons also are not nearly as good as the weapons available on Legion or Fenrir. So the only thing you're really getting out of picking her at the end of the day is a deployable shield. And since there's other operators you could pick with a deployable shield that would bring more utility, I think Ella has to go in the bottom of C tier. Now following up Ella, we have Fenrir who just recently got nerfed in Operation New Blood and I think he is going to go in the middle of A tier. Fenrir is still a really strong operator despite all the nerfs he got in this patch. Fenrir now only has access to four mines at a time and also he only has two activation codes meaning that only two of his mines can be active at once and then on top of that his mines are no longer bulletproof being that the attackers can just shoot his mines if they're inactive and that Twitch is an even stronger counter to Fenrir than she used to be. However Fenrir did get one nice buff in this patch and that is the fact that after one of his mines is shot, he then gets that activation code back, meaning that throughout the round, he'll always have access to two activation codes. This is good for Fenrir because it allows him to put his mines in a more aggressive position, and it doesn't punish him for the attackers shooting his traps. And keep in mind, Fenrir still has access to that secondary shotgun and the MP7 as his primary weapon. So his kit is still amazing, and he still has a really good gadget on his hands. The only reason why I'm not putting him in S tier anymore is because I do think he is going to be a lot more fair in this patch because of the fact that 
operators like Twitch can counter him so easily. And so I think putting him in the middle of A tier is a fair position. Another operator joining him in A tier is going to be Frost, and she's going to be going right under him in the A tier. The reason why Frost is going in A tier is because she has the amazing deployable shield secondary shotgun combo that allows her to set up the bomb site for her entire team. And then on top of that, she has three of her welcome mats, which can be useful in a round depending on where you place them. And she has a decent primary weapon in the form of the nine millimeter C1. Overall, Frost is just a really well-rounded operator that brings a ton of utility to her team. And that's why she's going in the A tier. No matter what round you pick her in, she will most likely give you some form of utility. Now moving past Frost, we have Goyo, who's going to be going in the top of B tier. Goyo is a really solid operator for burning the attacker's time because he gets four of his Vulcan canisters that the attackers are forced to wait through. However, Goyo does have a couple of problems that stops him from going any higher on this list. And that is the fact that he is easily countered by Twitch and the fact that he's easily countered by any form of explosives. This means that if the attackers know that you're picking Goyo a lot, they can pretty easily easily pick a lineup around that operator and potentially counter you. And then another thing that hurts Goyo in this ranking is the fact that his canisters can actually work against your team. If the attackers get control of the bomb site early in the round, or if you just put your Goyo canisters in horrible positions, the attackers can actually use them against you to help themselves take or hold map control. So overall, Goyo can be a solid pick, but he's definitely not on the same level as the operators up in A tier. Speaking of A tier, another operator that's going to be going up there is Jaeger. Jaeger is strong for reasons that you guys have heard a thousand times in these tier list videos. His ADSs or Omai's magnets are quite literally the foundation of any defense. Without them, you wouldn't be able to counter grenades. And that's the only reason Jaeger is going up in the A tier because everything else about Jaeger's kit is not good at all. Jaeger has the 416 AR, which is statistically one of the worst guns in the game. And then he also has mediocre secondary gadgets at best. And so if Jaeger's gadget wasn't so fundamental, I would put him pretty low on this list. But since his gadget is extremely strong, I think he has to go in the A tier. And our next operator, Cade, is also going to be going in the top of a tier and the reason for this is because once again he has a very fundamental gadget to the way the defense plays right now Cade's electro claws are the only gadget in the game right now that can electrify a hatch meaning that he's the only operator that can stop the attackers from getting a hatch open his gadget also can cover a huge amount of walls with electricity which compared to his competition is a pretty big deal the only thing that is going against Cade is the fact that his weapons aren't the greatest he has the aug a3 smg and the tcs g12 shotgun which they're both decent weapons but compared Compared to other options on the defense, they could be a lot better. But considering that he has the choice between a nitro cell or barbed wire, and he has that amazing gadget, he has to go up in the A tier. Now the next operator I'll be discussing, Capcan, he is going to be going in the middle of B tier. Capcan is a solid pick all around. He has a pretty decent primary weapon in the form of the VSN SMG. He has access to the nitro cell and impacts, and his gadget is pretty useful in most rounds. However, if the attackers know you have a cap can, the chances of you actually getting any utility out of his traps drop off significantly. If the attackers during the prep phase drone you out and ping you, or if they just know your general position on the map and they know where you're putting your traps down, you're most likely not going to get anything out of his traps, which is why cap can can't go super high on this list. Additionally, if they know you're bringing a cap can, the attackers can bring an operator like Twitch, Brava or IQ and just outright counter your gadget entirely. So Capcan is still a solid pick in most rounds, but I definitely do not think he's worthy of anything higher than the B tier. However, the same thing cannot be said about Legion, which is one of the strongest defenders in the game right now, which is why he's going to be going in the top of A tier. Legion has access to a secondary shotgun, a bulletproof camera, an amazing weapon in the form of the T5 SMG, and he has access to his goo mines, which provide his team with a ton of intel and they deal damage and slow aggression from the attackers. Just an amazing operator all around and definitely worthy of the A tier. You could even make an argument for him going in S, but I do think he's just on the cusp of being balanced. So I don't think Ubisoft needs to necessarily nerf him right now, but I do think in the future, he could potentially get to that point. Now, moving on to Maestro, he is going to be going in the bottom of B tier. And the reason why Maestro is going so low on this list is because of the fact that he is countered by basically every attacker in the game. Maestro does have three cameras now, which is pretty huge. And considering that they're bulletproof, it does sound like he'd be a great choice for your team. And, and that would be true. But the problem is, like I said, Maestro has a ton of counters. The attackers can bring a Brava to just hack his cameras when he's not paying attention. The attackers can bring EMPs to force his cameras open. So that way you can then shoot his cameras. The attackers can bring explosives like Ash's uh, breaching charges and Sophia's reaching rounds to then destroy his cameras outright and the attackers can bring a dokabi or something like that and then hack into the defender's camera systems to then just use the bulletproof cameras against them and then on top of all of that the attackers can just walk up to his cameras and just melee the glass to shatter the glass meaning that maestro
Maestro won't be able to even see through his cameras. So with all of those counters, it's very hard to make an argument for Maestro going anything higher than the B tier. And the same exact thing can be said about Malusi, which is why she's going to be going in the middle of B tier. Malusi has a lot of the same counters that Maestro does. She can be countered by Brava pretty easily by getting hacked. The attackers can bring a ton of explosive utility to just outright deny it. And the attackers can bring EMPs to disable her gadget temporarily. However, she does have less counters than Maestro. And I do think that in most rounds, you'll get more utility out of bringing a Malusi than a Maestro. Because Malusi's gadget at a bare minimum will warn you of where the attackers are pushing from because you'll get a loud audio cue when they walk into your Banshees. And they can also potentially get you free kills by slowing down the attackers and forcing them to take a non-advantageous gunfight. And then they also function as a way to deny a rush strategy from the attackers if they decide to bring a Blitz or something like that. I would have put her a lot lower a few seasons ago, but now since she has access to the ACOG on her MP5, she has gotten a lot better in the fragging department. And so for that reason, I do think B tier is justified here. Now moving past Malusi, we have an operator that has fallen off a lot recently, and that is Mira. Mira is going to be going in the top of B tier for me right now. The reason why Mira has had such a strong fall off is simply for the fact that Ash's breaching rounds can now just outright deny Mira windows. If you know the defensive team is bringing a Mira, you can quite literally just switch off to Ash and then just use one of her Ash charges on the Mira window and it will shatter it, basically rendering it useless immediately. This was a huge nerf to Mira and it makes it a lot harder to get utility out of her consistently. She does still have access to the Vector as her primary weapon, a secondary shotgun, and a Nitro Cell, which is an amazing loadout. But you do have to keep in mind that her gadget did take a significant hit by the nerf. Since Ash is picked pretty much every round, it's very hard to find yourself being able to keep her mirror windows alive longer than the first minute or two of the round. Now the, now the next operator we're going to be ranking on the tier list is Mozzie, and he's going to be going in the middle of B tier. Mozzie is just a pretty average operator all around. He has pretty average weapons. He has access to the Nitro Cell as a secondary gadget option, and he brings three pests to the table, which can deny three drones from the attacking team, which when the attacker's drones drive into them, it does switch them to your side, meaning that you can use them as cameras for your team. Team. Overall, Mozzie's kit is just solid for roaming, but he's definitely not an operator that you need to be picking all the time because there are much better operators in the game, and that's why he's going in the B tier. However, moving past Mozzie, we have his competitor Mute, which just so happens to be one of the best operators on the defense right now, and he is going to be going in the top of A tier. Mute has access to four jammers, which allows him to deny drones in the area around his jammers. He has the shotgun SMG 11 combo, which is extremely strong for close range gunfights and setting up the bomb site. And he also gets a nitro cell on top of all of that. Because of all of that, Mute is one of the best operators in the game for setting up the bomb site and supporting his team. This is why Mute has consistently been at the top of most content creators tier lists over the past few years and because his kit is just absolutely insane. Then we pass Mute, we have a more disappointing operator in the form of Oryx, and he's going to be going in the bottom of C tier. The reason why Oryx is going so low on this list is because of the fact that his gadget is extremely map dependent. Oryx's gadget is mainly useful on maps with a lot of vertical play and a lot of hatches. So maps like Consulate and Cafe are great for him. But if you find yourself on a map that doesn't have a lot of hatches that he can jump up, his utility immediately falls off drastically. The main strength of Oryx is that he can get droned out by the attackers, and then as soon as the attackers start pushing him, he can drop or jump up a hatch to then force them to re-drone him and re-chase him down. This can allow Oryx to very effectively evade the attacker's drone work and to also pull off some pretty insane flanks. But if he doesn't have those hatches to his disposal, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to pull off those same plays. He does have barbed wire and a secondary shotgun to help his team out, and he can ram a dash through walls, which can allow him to help his team, you know, make rotates and stuff. But that utility isn't enough to justify bringing him over other operators on this list. And another operator that's going to be joining Oryx in the C tier is Pulse, and he's going to be going right in front of him in the middle of C tier. The reason why Pulse is such a bad operator in the current meta is because of the fact that his scanner's range is extremely small, and he can be easily countered by an IQ or just the enemy team droning effectively. Because Pulse is left so incredibly vulnerable while his scanner's out. If the attackers work together and they drone him out, they can very easily deal with him early in the round. And, and also if they bring an IQ, they can basically just get live updates on his location at all times. And considering that Pulse has one of the worst guns in the game, the UMP 45, he's gonna have a very hard time taking gunfights with those attackers when he has to. And then another thing that hurts Pulse significantly is the fact that Solace is such a strong competitor to him. Solace can not only counter the plant like he can, but she can also see any attackers on their drones through walls, any attacker 
electronic utility through walls and pretty much anything else she can imagine. And she has a better gun than Pulse by a mile. So because Pulse has such a strong competitor now, I think he has to go in the C tier. Now moving on to Rook, he is also an operator that's going to be going in the bottom of C tier. The reason why Rook is such a weak operator right now is for the same reasons that I discussed when talking about Doc and that I will discuss when talking about Thunderbird. And that is the fact that healing operators are just extremely niche at their core. Because of the fact that Siege has one shot headshot mechanics, you can never guarantee that a healing operator will get utility in an even round. Siege isn't like Overwatch where a healer is pretty much the foundation to any given round. If the enemy team is on their A game and they have good aim and they're just headshotting all of your teammates, then your Rook armor is basically going to do nothing. I will say the buff to Rook's armor allowing his entire team to revive on demand is strong, but since it makes a loud audio cue and it's very obvious to the enemy team that you have Rook armor on, I don't think that ability justifies him being brought over other operators or even other healing operators. Now moving past Rook, we have the new addition in Operation New Blood, that being the recruit rework for the defense called Sentry. Sentry is going to be going in the middle of A tier. And the reason for this is because having access to two secondary gadgets on the defense is huge. If you watch my attacker tier list video, you may have saw that I put striker in the B tier. And that is just because the attacker secondary gadgets are inherently weaker. The attack does have access to flashbangs and nades. That doesn't compare to the deployable shield and barbed wire combo that you can run on sentry. Barbed wire just recently got buffed and the deployable shield is found very rarely on operators. Meaning that picking sentry can allow you to get two of the strongest secondary gadgets in the game on a single operator. I I genuinely think that this will be worth running in a lot of rounds and I think I'm going to find myself picking Sentry a lot in my lineups just for that purpose. She also has access to a really strong weapon kit as well which is an added bonus. Then we pass Sentry we have Smoke which is also going to be going in the middle of A tier. Smoke is just a solid all round operator. He has barbed wire, the shotgun SMG 11 combo that Mute has which I discussed multiple times as being extremely strong and he has his gas canisters which can slow down the attack if they start getting aggressive and it can also be late in the round for denying the plan. Overall, just a really solid operator, definitely worthy of the A tier. Now, Solace is going to be a somewhat controversial placement on this list. I know a lot of people think that the nerf coming in Operation New Blood is going to absolutely kill her, and I know a lot of people think that she's still going to be pretty strong. Me personally, just from what I've seen and played, I think Solace is going to be somewhere in the middle. And for that reason, I'm going to be putting her in the top of B tier. Solace's nerf is huge. Her losing access to those impact grenades is going to make it a lot harder for her to counter the plant, and the significant nerf to her gadget's radius is going to make it harder for her to see attack around the map. However, it doesn't change the fact that Solace is still one of the best roamers in the game. Her being able to sit on one side of the map and then be able to see where the attackers are droning her from in basically a 12 meter radius around herself is still really strong. And she still has access to the P90 SMG as one of her primary options, or she can bring a shotgun SMG 11 combo to help her deny the plant from below. Overall, she's still going to be a very well-rounded operator. I still see her being a pretty solid pick in a lot of rounds. I just don't think that she's going to be so strong to the point where you're going to want to bring her in every round and that's why I'm going to be putting her in the B tier. Now, the same thing cannot be said about Tachanka, and that is why he's going to be going in the bottom of D tier, and he's going to be the worst placement on this tier list. The reason why I think Tachanka is such a bad operator right now is because of the fact that his gadget forces him to take his gun away, which means he's extremely vulnerable while using it. His fire doesn't last very long, and the radius is very small. And on top of all of that, his launcher takes forever to reload. This basically makes Tachanka a huge risk to run, because you could get a decent amount of utility out of his gadget, but you could also be caught with your pants down and just immediately get destroyed by the attackers as soon as you try to use your gadget. Tachanka's ability to get utility is mainly reliant on the map you're on and the level of the opponents you're against. If you're on a map that has a lot of very tight corridors and a lot of small staircases, his gadget can put in a lot of work there. But if the attackers are smart, they'll just run through the fire and then kill you. The only thing really going for Tachanka right now is the fact that he has a deployable shield and two really strong primary weapon options at his disposal. But considering how bad his gadget is, I think he has to go in the bottom of D tier. Ubisoft needs to give him a rework at some point in the near future, in my opinion, for him to have any sort of success at the higher levels. Now, moving past Tachanka, we have Thorn, which is another operator that I strongly considered putting in the D tier, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to put her in the bottom of C tier. Thorn's gadget is extremely weak, and that is the reason why she's going so low on this list. Her Razor Blooms have a really slow activation time, meaning that the attackers have plenty of time to get out of their radius before they have to take damage, and they're very easy, easily dealt with with operators like Twitch or with just a simple bullet. The only thing stopping
stopping Thorn from going lower on this list is the fact that she does have the M870 and a secondary SMG at her disposal, allowing her to play kind of a similar role as maybe a smoke or a mute, allowing her to play on super tight quarters areas of the map and, you know, take advantage of those close range gunfights. And she also has access to that deployable shield, which can once again allow her to play on a power position with two really good close range weapons. Now moving past Thorn, we have another operator that has a really weak gadget and that is Thunderbird. And she is going to be going in the top area of D tier. The Thunderbird, after all the changes Ubisoft has done to her, is basically dead in the water. Her secondary gadget choices are awful. Her primary weapon choices are decent. She does have a secondary SMG at her disposal, but none of that even matters because of the fact that her gadget is so terrible. All three of her Kona stations combined cannot even heal an operator up to full HP, and their cooldown and their cooldown takes forever. The only benefit that Thunderbird really has over other healing operators is the fact that her gadget can still get utility for her team when she's dead. But considering how weak her gadget is, it doesn't really matter because she's not really bringing that much to the team in general. However, the same thing cannot be said about Valkyrie, and she is going to be going in the top of A tier. Valk is the definition of an operator that is good every round. She brings three additional cameras to her team, which is huge for getting intel. And she brings a nitro cell to the table, which can allow her to pick up frags from below by using that intel from her cameras. And she gets a desert eagle to make head holes and full holes on the bomb site. And she gets that MPX SMG, which is a low recoil headshot machine. Just a really solid operator all around, definitely worthy of her position. Now moving past Valk, we have Vigil, who's going to be going in the bottom of B tier. I think Vigil, after the recent Solace nerf, does have the potential to go up on this list as time goes on but for right now i do think he deserves to be at this position vigil has access to a really strong weapon kit he has the k1a smg or the boss g if you really want to as his primary options and he has the c75 auto and the smg 12 machine pistols as his secondary options and then he gets impacts on top of all of that and his gadget does serve a pretty decent purpose when active vigil's gadget completely removes him off of any cameras on the map meaning that the attackers cannot drone him out and even if doe could be hacks into the defense of camera system, they still won't be able to see Vigil's location. And this does sound exceptionally good on paper. However, when Vigil's ability is active, he does cause a glitch effect on the cameras and his gadget does produce a audio cue, which allows the attackers to pinpoint his location if they drone for long enough. This does mean that Vigil isn't completely invisible to drones. The attackers can pinpoint the general location of him if they work together and use multiple drones. But I still think his ability combined with his impact grenades and his really strong kit does make him a pretty good roaming option compared to operators like Mozzie or Solace, which are his competitors. Now moving past Vigil, we have Wamai, which is another exceptionally strong operator, and he is going to be going in the top of A tier. Wamai is really strong for the same reasons I mentioned with Jaeger. His ability to deny nades is basically fundamental to every defensive setup. You have to have some form of nade denial in Siege to be able to protect your gadgets, and if you don't, you're basically going to throw every round because you're not going to be able to defend things like your Azami Kibas, your Castle Barricades, your Frost Mats, your Deployable Shields, your Fin Rear Gadgets, and pretty much anything else. However, unlike Jaeger, Wamai actually has a really good kit outside of just his gadget. He has access to the AUG Assault Rifle and the MP5K SMG as his primary options, and he gets impact grenades on top of all of that. And with the recent update, he did get an ACOG on his MP5K, which just makes him an absolute powerhouse. There is an argument to be made that Wamai could be moved up to S tier, but I think compared to the operators that will find themselves in the S tier, I think Wamai does belong in the A tier. Now moving past Wamai, we have Warden, which was an operator I struggled to rank on this tier list. But I think he's going to be going in the top end of B tier. The reason why Warden is going so high on this list right now, despite the fact that his gadget isn't amazing, is simply for the fact that Ying is such a dominant force right now. Ying has absolutely taken over the meta. She is one of the strongest attackers in the game, especially for taking map control and for going for the plant late in the round. And without a Warden, you basically have no way to counter her because she can blind and smoke the entire bomb site out and then just go for a plant in the middle of the site. And your team will have no way of killing her or pinpointing her location. Warden is that that solution. And then on top of that, Warden also counters other smoke strategies like bringing a glass and a ton of smoke grenades or a Sins and glass together. Warden will be able to counter those sort of strategies. And then on top of that, he has a deployable shield at his disposal and the shotgun SMG-12 combo, which can be pretty good for holding a power position. All of those reasons combined kind of make him a top of B tier operator. I do think that if Ying gets nerfed heavily or if smoke grenades stop becoming such a prominent thing in the current meta, I could see the argument for putting Warden lower, but right now he has to go in at least B tier. Now moving past Warden, 
we have the final operator and the second operator to go in S tier to Burrell. To Burrell is going in S tier because his ability to deny hard breach utility is just realistically unmatchable. To Burrell, just by throwing his gadgets on a wall, can burn 30 seconds off the attackers. And the only thing they can really do to stop him is to hopefully shoot his gadget off the wall when he goes to do it. And the only way the attackers can do that is by playing vertically on the wall or by trying to send it a Twitch drone to deny his canisters. But if a Tu Burrell is smart, they can avoid those counters. And if successful, they can basically guarantee 30 seconds off of the clock every single round. This combined with the fact that he has a Nitro Cell and access to a DMR on the defense just makes him an absolute demon. Turburau is definitely an operator that Ubisoft should consider nerfing in the near future because at the higher level, he is a dominant force. Anyways, that wraps up today's tier list. As always, this video is strictly my opinion, and if you disagree, feel free to leave your takes in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, I make these content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't want to miss the next upload. If you want to watch another video just like this one, I'll be popping up on your screen right now that I'm sure you all enjoy. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.